Just a minute, ladies. I'm not sure of that one. I think Miss Hendricks was twitching. She usually is. You mean itching. How would you feel in this thing? Let's face it, Butch. You can't have your picture taken in a sweatshirt. How do we look, Miss Thornton? Lovely. Like a bouquet of roses. There. Is it any wonder she's our favorite teacher? Will Miss Blake please remove her glasses? I'm getting inhalation. I'm sorry, but I have to wear them. I get dizzy without them. And never let it be said that a gamma was dizzy. Put on your snood and let's get this finished, huh? Very well. Now, will Miss Sharon move just... Good heavens, if you're going to fuddy daddy all afternoon, I'm going for a swim. Oh, come on, Paula. You can't walk out in the picture. Sure not. You want to be hung, don't you? Of course she does, and I'm in favor of it. Don't ever bite yourself in the arm. You might die of it. All ready, ladies. One, two, three. That's fine. When will they be ready? I'd like to order a dozen of them, please. Then all you'll have to do is find 11 other people who'll want them. You're going to swim. Come along. Why? Now, now. Paula isn't very gracious, dear. But you learn to pay no attention to her. Sometimes I wonder why I'm joining the sorority that she's in. Because Gamma's the best on the campus, and we're lucky they pledged us. Besides, the other girls are swell, and I can't wait to be initiated tomorrow. Paula or no Paula. Yeah, I suppose you're right, only it would be nicer if there was no Paula. What do you want in your lemonade? Cream or lemon? Yes. I'll take vanilla. Put mine on rye. So I'll probably get the leave before I'm shipped out and be breezing in any day now to see you. Won't be for long, but a few hours might be enough to tell you some of the things I have on my mind. So far, so far, and so far. Well, anyway, he might arrive any minute. He writes a nice letter, doesn't he? Yes, those parts you skipped are particularly graphic. <laughs> What's he going to tell you about, Plain? He better not. Seems to me you kind of like Ray Brennan, huh? I only think of him 24 hours a day. Say, you've really got it bad, haven't you? Uh-huh. Oh, gee, I'm glad. <laughs> well, I have to phone. I'll be right back. Keep the pool wet for me. Hello? Well, hello. When did you get in town? Of course I know who it is. You don't think I could forget Ray Brennan, do you? Oh, you're calling Jane. Well, I know, Ray, she isn't here. Well, but I can't have a lieutenant floating around town on the loose. You might get into trouble. Suppose I pick you up and we'll do something gay. Well, if you don't reach her, why, call me back. My office still holds. Bye. What do you want? To use the phone. May I? Sure. Go ahead. If your mother was an Olympic champion, when are you going to realize you're not? Well, i got to keep on trying, haven't I? i got something to live up to. What would you have done if your mother had been a bearded lady? Well, I'd uh... Alice? Yes, Paula? Oh, will you come up to the house a minute? I'd like to talk to you. All right, in a second. Aren't you going for a swim, Paula? In a minute. I'm going to change now. Here it comes, Butch. I... I'm scared. Oh, you're always scared. Just tell her the truth. What can she do? Well, I don't know, but she's so psychologically unsound, she can't bear to be crossed. She might... she might do anything. Hi. Well, when are you seeing him? Who? Oh, the innocent stuff, huh? I suppose Paula didn't tell you Ray just called? No, she didn't. Oh, she didn't, huh? Well, I just heard her talking to him. She asked him when he got in town. But she was just here. I spoke to her. Why, she never said a word. Oh, that harpy. Wouldn't you think she'd be over her crush on him by now? Some gals just can't believe a man doesn't want him. Well, maybe... Maybe it's a gag. Maybe she's trying to kid me no. somehow. Sure, that baby kid's like the fun-loving Gestapo. Don't you know where he might be? No. But I certainly mean to find out. Jane, Jane, use your head. If Paula knew, she wouldn't tell you. That's right. No use wasting time on her. Hey, what's cooking? Jane. Me too, for that matter. Paula's just pulled one of those tricks of hers that make you want to kill her. Well, why doesn't somebody? You can't. 
There's a law against it. Someday that snake in silk underwear is going to get her neck in a sling. Alice? Yes? What did you want, Paula? As if you didn't know. The thesis, where is it? I have to turn it in Monday, you know. Well, I didn't write it. You didn't write it? Why not? Because it's dishonest. I told you I wouldn't do it. I don't mind tutoring you. You know that. I've helped you all I could for two years. But it just isn't right to do your work for you. That's just quibbling. You told me what to say in the paper, didn't you? What difference does it make which one of us writes it? But, Paula, I don't think it's fair. Of course it is. Look, you'll have plenty of time to do it at the lodge. There's a good girl. I'm sorry. Sorry? You mean you won't? That's right. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I... I tell you what. We'll have a swell weekend in the Pines and forget all about the thesis, huh? And then when we get back into town Monday, you can pay me the money you owe me. But... But I can't, Paula. It's still almost a hundred dollars. Look, when you wanted that encyclopedia, I hoped to get it, didn't I? But when I want something, it isn't right. Now I want the money. But you said I wouldn't have to pay you for six months. I haven't got it now. All right, then I'll have to write your family for it. Oh, no, Paula, please don't do that. You know how poor we are. It'd worry them to death. If my mother thought that I owed that much Good money... Good heavens, what do I care about your mother? It's just it, you don't. You don't care about anything except yourself. But someday you will. Someday you'll get exactly what you deserve. You'll pay for all the mean, wicked things you've done. Remind me to worry about that. Monday, Monday, or I'll write your family. Well, Janie, I sure hope you find him. I think I know a few places he might be. Well, it's not swimming. I forgot to tell you, we're eating afterwards. You forgot to tell me something else, too, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. But if you're through so early, don't let me keep you. I'm through, all right. But it isn't early. It's pretty darn late for me to wake up. I've always known what a rat you are, but I've made excuses for you. Told myself that you never had a mother nor the kind of affection a kid should have. But trying to keep Ray and me apart is something I can't excuse. Goodbye, Mary. Bye. So you were listening, you nasty little sneak. I wasn't listening, Drip. But thank goodness I heard you. And ran out and told Jane. You know, I'm about sick enough of your interference to put an end to it. Confidentially, you slink. Oh, so you don't think I can, huh? I understand Miss Thornton got you that post at Mayfield Hall. That's right. I start teaching as soon as I graduate. But Mayfield's such an exclusive school. I should think they'd want excellent character references and assurance of your background. And what's the matter with my character? Nothing. Nothing at all. But I'll bet you didn't happen to mention your brother. What do you know about my brother? Something that nobody else does yet. But if you don't keep out of my hair, it'll be all over the campus. You know, Paula, like Jane, I used to feel sorry for you. I figured maybe you weren't well mentally. Now I think you're lucky if you just stay healthy physically. Hello there. Dad. Hello, Mary. I say, what are you two doing indoors on such a fine day? Well, we were just going down the pool. Everyone's out there. How about going for a swim? Hmm? Well, I'll take you down for advisement. Well, how are you, Mary? Well, fine, thank you, Mr. Canfield. Well, it seems to me that you're looking a little peaked. Working your way through college is fine, but you've got to leave yourself time to get outdoors now and then. Oh. Paula, is our Mary pale, or do I imagine it? No, indeed, Dad, you're right. Practically a prison, Paula. You kids are going to like it up there. Well, here goes nothing. Of course, we have a few casualties each initiation, but... The setting is too divine. The forest primeval, so to speak, where one can get back to nature, rarely one can. Uh-oh, must be a man around. Yep, Paula's Park. You blister. Morning, Mr. Canfield. Oh. How are you? So nice to see you. Well, how Boston? Mr. Canfield. I'm certain I have something to contribute to the American theater. Rarely I am. That brand of ham should be rationed. Hey, you want to see my reversible submersible? No! Coming up! What part of Boston, Eve? <laughs> Girls must have some relaxation. Eve can't always be the drama student any more than I can always be the teacher. 
Well, that's right. You're off for a holiday tomorrow, aren't you? Well, if you can call it a holiday, chaperoning these nine frisky females. <laughs> what? No boys? Oh, no. They want initiations to be terrible like that. Is that the way you feel about it? Dad, you can't expect Miss Thornton to react the same as a girl. May I borrow you a minute? It's awfully important. Will you excuse me? I'd like to take that girl apart. Find out what makes her tick. A lot of people would like to take her apart, period. Well, we're off in a cloud of dust. Two days in the mountains. I'm going to relax like mad. I'm not. Me and my equipment are planning a busy weekend. What's in this bag? Well, what would be in a wardrobe bag, silly? Dresses, of course. They're the boniest dresses I've ever felt. Jane asked me to bring it up for her so she could study over the weekend. Dresses? I thought she was a medical student. <gasps> oh! Oh! Who was it? A friend of ours who lost a ration book. Don't let him kid you, kid. It was really a pledge. Something went wrong at the last initiation. Why couldn't Jane bring it up herself in her own car? Well, she's coming straight from her last lecture. Hey, when did Mary and Miss Thornton arrive? Oh, Miss Thornton's coming after class. And Mary's coming when she's through work. And by the way, when does dear Paula appear on the scene? Who knows? She'll probably show up at twilight on her custom-made broomstick. <laughs> Nature. Come on, infants, get all that luggage and I'll open up. All of it? Naturally. What do you think freshmen are for? Well, don't look so sad. This is a very cheerful party. Provided I can find the key. You mean nobody's here? No. Then what? Why, what's opening the door? Hi, gang. Surprise? Oh, no. Hi. Things like that we just toss off like a landslide. Well, that's appreciation. Well, it came early. Just opened the house for you. Didn't you go to work today? Nope. Didn't feel equal to it. How'd you get that jalopy up the hill? Hey, that's a smart car. It made all the grades. Well, what are you waiting for? Expect to be carried over the threshold? Oh, but that's a wedding custom. That's right. Up here, we don't carry them in. We carry them out. Well, come on in, kids. But you better read that first and make your own decisions. This initiation will be a humdinger, providing the rope doesn't break. Is this noose big enough for two heads? Sure. Now, if we jerk the chairs away suddenly... Oh, no. We did that the last time and they lost consciousness too soon. Remember? Yes, that sure was a close shave. Well, you girls will have to be more careful. We hardly got the ranger here in time with the pull motor. Oh, you're absolutely right. And when Nancy got out of the hospital... You know, she never was quite the same. Oh, you're just trying to scare us. They're doing a pretty good job. Won't it start soon? We can begin carving the minute Paul and Jane get here. C -c -c carving Yes, the chicken. Weren't you talking about dinner? No, we're not very hungry. <laughs> Oh, here comes one of them now. Oh, I hope it's Jane that if anything happens, we'll have a doctor in the house. Hi, Jane. Hi, Hello. everybody. When do we eat? As soon as Paula the pill arrives. If not sooner, I hope. Uh, hey, how does the other guy look? Oh, no, till the uh, autopsy. Youngster, come here. Take these to my room. What took you so long to get here? Well, hey, uh, look. It looks like a blood stain. Blood? By gosh, it is. Had to open it to get the bandage out. Had a flat, and the Don Jack slipped and uh, cut my hand. Oh, well, we'll probably have more blood than that before the evening's over. Hey, you, infant, back in the kitchen to get to work on the food. Boy, that's work I could use. Yeah, I'm hungry, too. Look, Paula would keep us waiting all night if she found something better to do. Why don't we eat? Let's. Well, Come on, kids, idea. let's eat. How about some radio? Yeah, get KPC, will you, Butch? The Curly Girly Shampoo Hour has a Greek drama tonight. <laughs> I want the baseball scores. How about you, Miss Thornton? Either one. They're both Greek to me. With a flip of my wrist, you're going to take what I get. Do you have a tough, stubby beard that defies your razor? Yes, but on me, it's becoming. In heaven's 
name, what's that? Well, it happens to be Beethoven's Eroica Symphony in E-flat, second movement. Boy, that's not the second movement, that's the payoff. Somebody turn that off. I will. How about some nice romantic dinner music, huh? Wow. Oh, boy, food for me, muscle. What, muscle? Well, a girl can dream, can't she? And the mediation board announces there will be no work stoppage. The body of socially prominent Paula Canfield, 21-year-old heiress of the Can... Seco. There was no further information issuing from police headquarters concerning the tragedy. In Washington today, the Senate Naval Affairs Committee... What did he say? Did you hear that? Paula dead. Paula? But she was supposed to be here any minute. I don't believe it. He's kidding. Sure, those commentators have a terrific sense of humor. I wonder how it happened. She must have driven over the embankment. Well, he didn't say anything about a car. He said she was found in the Arroyo. She wouldn't have just fallen over. Well, it must have been an automobile accident. Poor Paula. I don't feel very good either. Do you suppose anybody does? I think we ought to go home. We can't have the initiation now. And we're not going to be in any mood for a holiday. That's right. Me too. I'd rather go. How about you, Bert? Bert? Hmm? We think it'd be a good idea to go home. Yeah, I, I guess it would. Of course it would. We couldn't have a pleasant moment here now. Well, we might as well start packing. Good evening. Likewise, I'm sure. Is this the Gamma Theta Lodge? Yes, but men aren't allowed in sorority houses. Well, I'm afraid it'll be necessary. I'd like to see Miss Grace Thornton. Ask the gentleman in, Penny. I didn't know you were policemen. You didn't have your hats on. I'm Grace Thornton. Well, how do you do? I'm Captain Brooks of the State Police. This is my assistant, Walter Cummings. Hi. I understand these girls are in your charge. Yes, I'm usually chaperone on these weekends. Gamma is my sorority also. Oh, I see. Well, I'll make my visit as brief as possible. Is it about Paula? How did you know about Miss Canfield? We just heard about it on the radio. <laughs> Naturally, it, it was a great shock to all of us. Of course. You were all friends of hers, weren't you? Well, Paula wasn't exactly popular. I see. But we thought since you all knew Miss Canfield, more or less intimately, you might be able to shed some light on the case. But we don't even know the details of the accident. I'm afraid it wasn't an accident. Miss Canfield was murdered last night. Murdered? I don't believe it. There must be some mistake. Do you know who did it? How? How could you know? Are there any clues? Are you sure? What was the motive? Quiet, quiet, everybody. Stop giving the captain a third degree. Let Captain Brooks do the asking, girls. I don't have to tell you that this is serious. Won't you come in and sit down? Well, thank you. It won't take long. Just a few routine questions. Miss Canfield received a telephone call last evening from a lady. Any one of you phone her? I... Yes? I was just going to say, we should put another log in the fire. One gets so chilly, doesn't one? Then uh, none of you phoned her? No, no, no. Perhaps you can tell me something about Miss Canfield's associates. The murderer seemed to possess unusual strength. Oh. Ah! Ah! I'm sorry. I'm not very strong. I can't think of anyone answering that description. Yes, afternoon, Miss Canfield gave a party at which you were all present. Is that correct? Well, the girls had a sorority picture taken on her grounds, to be exact. Afterwards, we stayed for swimming. I see. But during the afternoon, did any of you quarrel with Miss Canfield? I... I guess I did. So did I. I did, too. I wanted to, as usual. I wasn't very nice about her. I never wished her anything very good. Look, let's be frank. Nobody was ever around Paula without having some sort of fight with her. Well, I never did. All right. So you're the only exception. It may not be nice when Paula's dead, but I'm not afraid to say that I disliked her more than anyone I've ever known. 
And I was brought up with her. Nobody could think more of Paula than I did, and I hated her. Don't let the girls' admissions give you the wrong impression, Captain. I can assure you that though most of them disliked Paula, none of them wished her dead. I understand. And uh, none of you remained after the swimming? No. No. No, we all left together. I see. Well, that's all for now. But when more information comes in, I'll have to ask you more routine questions. I'll be up tomorrow. But we were going home. That is, of course, unless the captain preferred we'd stay. We're frightfully anxious to cooperate. Rarely we are. Well, I would prefer it if you don't mind. Not that you have to, you understand. But until the investigation is completed, it would be much more convenient if you'd all remain together. Just routine, of course. Oh, well, naturally. Well, you can count on us, Captain. As Miss Sharon said, we, we do want to cooperate. Thank you. Tell me, how is Mr. Canfield standing up under it? Well, he's broken up, naturally. Are you acquainted with him? Oh, yes, I know him very well. Poor man, Paula was all he had left in the world. I must call and see him as soon as I return to town. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Thank you, Miss Thornton. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, Chief. Yeah. Ain't this a honey of a case? First one I've been on where all the suspects were babes. Who said there were suspects? Well, you said we were going to question them again. Did I say we? No. But you're going to need help, boys. That one with the log, for instance. Seemed kind of tricky. Yeah, she is a cute trick. But maybe she has a father. Mm -hmm. Gay, darling. Every moment we spent together. Our romance has been like a great bubble. No, like a bright bubble. Thanks. Our romance has been like a bright bubble dancing in the sun. And now you're leaving me. Never to return. No, I shan't cry, Michael. Now make the scene you seem to be expecting. Though every word you've said has pierced my breast like a dart. <gasps> Don't touch it. It's poison. I read it in the mystery story once. It was meant for me. But it wouldn't have pierced your breast, old girl. My aim is terrible. I missed that target by inches. You're telling me I almost had feathers. That's what I said. My aim is terrible. You better hang that target in here, Butch. Oh, I'm tired of him anyway. Sorry, Eve. Sorry I missed. Oh, she had it coming. If you hadn't been so anxious to impress Captain Routine, we'd all be home by now. Use your heads, you dopes. Anybody who'd wanted to go home would have looked guilty. Oh, cut the drama, Glamour Pan. He doesn't suspect us. Oh, no. Yes, he does. He thinks one of us murdered Paula. Sure he does. We're suspects, all right. One of us did it. What am I saying? That we're killer dealers. But fortunately, we are only interested in the gendarme's opinion. But I tell you, they think we did it. I know they do. And tomorrow, someone will be arrested and taken to jail. It'll be horrible. Horrible. <laughs> you simply must stop it, dear. I thought we all agreed not to discuss it. Find out terrible things. Any one of us could have killed her. Any one of us. If I didn't know you never read detective stories, I'd say you read too many of them. Sure, Alice. Take it easy. Oh, you think they won't find out that Paula was trying to get Ray Brennan away from you? Or that she knew something that you didn't want told? She told me yesterday she had something on you. She's probably told others. You both have perfect motives. That's ridiculous. Is it? Well, who had the best opportunity? You did. Oh, you're crazy. And you said a lot of times you'd like to strangle her. Alice, I insist. You wish there wasn't any, Paul. I heard you. And you've always said you'd like to kill her. They'll find out everything. Everything. And what will they find out about you, Alice? <gasps> you're overwrought, Alice. You'd better go to bed, dear. I think we all should. It's been a hectic day and we face another tomorrow. Okay by me. Give my insomnia a chance to put in some overtime. Oh, I'm ready to hit the hay. Not that the conversation isn't boring. But nightmares. Yes, I'm coming. Where's my bag? Where's that Shirley? Somebody call me? Somebody should. Everything's in the wrong room.
right, will you? I'm loaded down. Not loaded now, just down. Will you light the light? I've only got two hands. What do you think I am? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Well, that's a fine way to leave yourself lying around. What's the matter? Bed too hard? She passed out. She couldn't have. She hasn't had a drink. Moron. She's fainted. Or... Or... She probably is. Oh, I feel faint. Give me some water. Did I say go at your ninny? What happened to her? Oh, she just fainted from excitement. Faint. Somebody hit me. They turned off the lights and see you. Oh, boy, oh, boy, if we had a hen, we could hatch that. Maybe it's a fracture. We should put a splint on it. Or tie a tourniquet around her neck. Bert, get a cold compress. You sure must have landed hard, kid. But I didn't fall, I tell you. I was hit. By whom, dear? Well, I couldn't see. The lights went off while I was examining the... If she barked, it's hydrophobia. It's gone. That's what they wanted. What's gone? Who wanted what? Or am I nuts? The compact. Paula's compact that I just found on the chair. Paula's compact? Here at the lodge? I couldn't have been mistaken. It's that odd-looking one that her father had made for her. The one with the two fawns on it. But Paula hasn't been here, and she had that compact yesterday. I saw it. Me too. That's right. No, I know, but don't you see? The murderer must have brought it here. Oh, sure. One of us bumped Paula off, took her compact so we could leave a clue, and planted it here so you could find it. Has anybody got an aspirin? But it was here. I found it. You, you've got to believe me. Why didn't you tell us that before, Alice? Well, I... I was so surprised. I... I wanted to be sure. Look, we're all upset. Now, let's get a good night's sleep, and, and we'll discuss it in the morning. Butch, leave. Take care of her, will you? One more crack about one of us doing it, and I really will take care of her. But somebody did put out the light. Probably the same one who puts out the light in the refrigerator. Well, what do you make of that? Well, you know, Alice has been studying awfully hard lately. I'm willing to forget the whole thing till tomorrow. Come on, Mary. Good night, girls, and try to get some sleep. The trying's all I'll do. Cheer up, youngsters. After this, the initiation won't be half bad. Night. Good night. Hmm. I wish I knew. Well, what do you mean? Oh, flip you for the bed. No, I always lose. So I'll take the couch to begin with. Now, what do you mean about Jane? Well, that is blood on her suitcase. She didn't have to hurt her hand fixing a tar. How do we know she fixed a tar? She might have hurt herself in a fight. Or how do we know her hand is hurt on the other hand? She certainly had a motive, didn't she? Paula was after her boyfriend. How do we know Paula wasn't getting him away from her? And love's always a swell motive for a murder. Oh, I don't believe a word of it. She could have gotten through the bedroom to conk Alice, couldn't she? There was a compact, and Jane's fingerprints were on it. Well, yes. If there was a compact, and Jane's fingerprints were on it. Did I frighten you? Not much. I'm sorry. I got to wondering about who was going to sleep on that narrow couch. I am, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to sleep very much anyway. No. Well, you won't have to use it, because Jane has a big double bed in her room and says you may sleep with her. Did you, Jane? Oh, no, I couldn't. I promised Shirley I'd stay here, didn't I? Oh, but that doesn't matter. I'm sure she'll be much more comfortable with Jane. But you just said... Don't mind what I said. She'll be right in. But I... Well, that is, I... Shirley's right, dear. You'll be more comfortable with Jane. Good night. Oh, no. That chance of a lifetime, and you try to throw it away. Well, I don't understand. I always thought you liked me. Then you do suspect Jane. I don't. Then you can't be afraid to sleep with her. Well, I... I'm not, but... Why should I? You to confess, of course. Murderers always have to tell somebody, and you'll get all the credit. Well, I'd just as leave you had it. But it wouldn't work. I'm suspicious, and she might sense it. But you believe in her, so she'll probably confide in you. 
Ah, oh, don't be a panty waste. Don't you want your name in the paper? Not in the obituary column, I don't. Oh, don't be silly. If she tries to kill you, I'll be right there. Where's there? Outside the door. Come on. Remember, get her to chatter. Well, like my teeth. Bow, oh, infant. Pile in. In? Sure, aren't you sleepy? Not so very. Well, you should be. Very late. Good night. Good night. Put out the light, will you? I can't sleep in the dark. Oh, for heaven's sake. All right. I'll put it out. What? Wouldn't you like to talk a while? Talk? What about? Oh, anything. Anything you might want to say? I'll go to sleep, will you, kid? I've had a very strenuous day. You wouldn't believe the things I've done. Three, four. One, two. Still at three, it. Four. Oh, do you think I'll ever have an athlete's arm? Why don't you set it for athlete's foot? Call it a night, will you, and get into bed. Okay. As soon as I give my teeth the brush off. Eve, where was Butch before? What? Gathering up her gymnasium, I guess. Why? I guess. Wasn't she with you? No, I was in... Say, what is this? Oh, now, look, dreary. If you're going to suspect Butch now, I'll start to work on a zoot straitjacket for you. Please believe me, Eve. I have my reasons. I believe you've lost your reason. All right. Think what you like. But will you do just this? Will you help me watch her? Whatever for. Just to prove I'm wrong, if you prefer. But will you? For that, yes. All right, then. Now, as soon as she goes to bed... Well, did you eat the canary? Or have you decided that I'm the murderer? Oh, don't be a fool, fool. Because if you have, you're right. I'm going to kill the first person that snores. until we search the death car. All right. Death car? Sure, Jane. Maybe we'll find the weapon. What weapon? How do I know? But don't quibble. Come on. Oh.
there's nothing here. Besides, I'm freezing. Let's examine the trunk. I feel an arm. Of course you do, stupid. It's mine. Let's go back. Don't be silly. Hey, what's this? Paula's head was much bigger than that. Couldn't be Paula's, you idiot. It's... I want to ask you people, especially you two. We'd like to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Just why are you here? Just routine. Then we are under suspicion. Maybe. What were you doing outside? Oh, just getting some fresh air. <laughs> Where's the other two? Probably in bed. No, Eva's in the closet. What's she doing there? She's a termite inspector. Oh. Nonsense. She's only fainted. Let's put her on the couch. Come on, get some water. Sure it is. What's going on here anyway? I've been on hundreds of cases, thousands of cases, and in all my experiences, this is the first time I've... What is this, a sorority house or a cemetery? Come on, take this in. Oh. What were you doing in there? You can't question her now. She's in a daze. Well, so am I. I find these two running around their sleepers outdoors. I see another dame scurrying around some bushes, and this one locked up with a skeleton. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Why don't you go, then? You must be awfully tired. I'll go when I find out who the dame is I saw in the bushes. Who, me? What's up with you, sister? You mean, what was I doing out yonder? That's it. I was on a bond-selling tour. Oh. Tell the policeman the truth, Bert. Well, there's nothing dramatic about it. I, I simply took a walk because I couldn't sleep. I don't suppose you believe me, do you? By now, I don't know what to believe. All I know is one of you characters had something to do with your girlfriend's murder. Oh, just a moment. I'm responsible for these girls, Mr. Cummings, and I cannot allow you to make these random accusations. If Captain Brooks approves of your conduct, I shall be very much surprised. Well, maybe I was kind out of line. But I was left to watch the house. Then do it from outside, Hawkshaw. Outside. It's been delightful, really. Do drop in again sometime. Yes, do. We've enjoyed it so much. Well, what do you think now? Are we suspects or aren't we? Well, we didn't all have motives. Oh, for heaven's sakes. With Paula, it wasn't a matter of a motive. It was just who got to her first. What do we do? Let's go to bed. I'm going to try again. Yeah, let's do it this time without saying goodnight. Maybe it'll be luckier. Coming, Mary? In a minute. Mary. Oh, yes? 
I don't think I can get to sleep quite yet, either. You knew I was worried, didn't you? Aren't we all? But you've always been able to tell about me. Well, maybe that's because you're my favorite pupil. More than that, you've been my best friend at college, Miss Thornton. I was the one who phoned Paula last night. Well, why didn't you tell the officers? Well, because it would have led to embarrassing questions. Embarrassing? Paula found out about my brother, and she threatened to tell. If it was found out, my chance to teach at Mayfield would be ruined. Not my chance to teach anywhere, I guess. Oh, we can't let that happen. Not after the way you worked for this opportunity. Well, you've helped me. But would you see the spot I'm in? If the police find out that I called, I'm just naturally suspect number one. Oh, now, let's not borrow trouble. Maybe the murderer's been caught and is safely locked up in jail this minute. I hope so. If not, well, we'll just have to await developments. But there's no use worrying till we have to, is there? No, of course not. I feel much better. Now that I've told somebody, maybe I can sleep. something, young lady. Let me tell you... Oh, gee, did you bring this for me? Yeah, we drew straws to see who'd make it for you. I lost. Oh, you did, huh? Well, you can't go around suspecting girls of killing their sorority sisters and be popular, you know. Oh, I didn't exactly think any of you did. I just thought that, well, if one of you did... As if I'd do anything so messy in the first place. Why, if I wanted to get rid of somebody, I'd just put poison in their food. Poison? I guess most women would. They say that... Poison? Hey, is this sweet enough? How would I know? Well, taste it. It's all right to me. You didn't take enough to make sure. Now I did. Yeah. About poison, though. I wouldn't even know whether to put it in liquid or just sprinkle it on food. Do these eggs need salt? Well, you're not going to find out by looking at them. Hey, that's, that's what I mean. They're okay now. Thanks. I'd put it in liquid. It would dissolve easier. I know. You want to know if it's too sweet. Nope, it wasn't. Well, I'll see you at lunchtime. I don't eat till one o'clock. Do you think you can wait that long? You know, I feel awfully strange today. Do you know somebody who doesn't? Something's missing and I can't put my finger on it. Then put it over your mouth, will you, kid? I don't feel like listening to how you feel. Look at the time and Captain Routine isn't here yet. 
At least somebody expects him. Wow. Get a load of the poor man's pinup. Going courting? Don't look now, darling, but your raffles are showing. You tell her, Blondie. That's it. That's what I'm missing with Sunday sunnies. What could be funnier than that? Would you do me a favor and cut your throat from ear to ear? I don't see how you can do it. I don't see how you can kid at a time like this. Who's kidding? How can you go right on being the same when you all know that one of us is a murderer? Alice, you simply must stop saying such things or even thinking them. But it's true, Miss Thornton. You know it's true. One of us killed Paula. Oh, what's the matter with you? Look what you made me do. I wanted to shoot the walnut, and instead I smacked the cane. Oh. You ought to have better sense than play commander with a gun like that. Mr. Cummings is right, but you know we're all on edge. Oh. I'm beginning to think we're foolish to stick around here. Well, the captain asked us to stay, dear. He just said he'd prefer it. And if I don't, what's to keep me? I am. If I was in charge of this case, I know what I'd do. Well, what would you do, Cummings? Well, in the first place, I'd... I'd, I'd, I'd uh, Oh, hello, Chief. Hi. Oh, good afternoon, hello. girls. Miss Thornton. I expected to be here earlier, but there have been a great many new developments. Like finding out who killed Paula, maybe? No, not exactly, but we expect to have that information within 24, 24 hours. hours. How did you know that? She reads. Don't you wish you could? Do forgive my sorority, Sister Captain. It hasn't been easy our being cooped up together after this ghastly affair. I understand, and I thank you for staying. My dear Captain, we were only too happy to cooperate, rarely. Ask us to stay another day and see what happens, rally. I hate to break up this rally, but when are we going home? Captain Brooks will tell us in due time, Butch. I hope you rested well, Miss Thornton. I'm afraid not under the circumstances. You should have been here. This one was pussyfooting around like she was haunting somebody. This one had a skeleton in her closet and passed out with it. And these two were prowling around with a skull. Well, that sounds very macabre. What were you doing with the skull? Nothing. We found it in Jane's car. Well, we were looking for the murder weapon. The murder weapon? In my car? Oh, we didn't find it. Well, I'm sure of that, because the murder weapon was a stone, which was still at the spot where Miss Canfield's body had been thrown into the Arroyo. But why were you searching the young lady's car? Well, not that I believed it for a minute. But she was late, with bloodstains on her suitcase, and a story about cutting her hand, and Paula was trying to get her boyfriend away from her, and her room was on the side where she could have gotten through the bathroom to hit Alice over the head. So that's why you wanted to talk last night. Surely thought maybe you might like to confess. And would to me because I didn't suspect you. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that these children's imaginations are inclined to run away with them, Captain. And Alice being hit over the head, was that imagination too? No. I don't care what they say. Somebody switched off the lights and hit me over the head, and when I came to, the compact was gone. Miss Blake tells us that she found Paula Canfield's compact here last night. They don't believe me, but it's true. I couldn't be wrong about that compact. Paula's father had it made for I've never seen another one like it. You've got to believe me. Somebody has to believe me. Oh, for heaven's sakes, is there anything you can tell Alice to quiet her? She's resolved that one of us killed Paula. Could be. What do you mean? We've definitely determined the murderer was a woman. Here we go again. Hey, quit it. You're splashing me. It can't be possible that it's raining, can it? Of course not. This is California. It's a high cloud. Yeah, the kind that washed the bridge out last fall. Thing come down. What rain? Stop imagining things. I'd hate to be caught in that fog with my water wings down. That certainly was a good meal. Yeah, and on you it looks good. I'm going to go take a look at the furnace. I remember when I used to like to eat. If it weren't for this sugar-cured ham, we could all be comfortably home by now. Yeah, I'd like to see my mother. I'd like to see some other faces, too. I don't have to tell you what the roads will be like in that torrent, do I? Of course not. Anybody with any intelligence would realize we couldn't travel. Anyone with any intelligence wouldn't have gotten us into this spot. But evil cooperate until it hurts. Uh, oh, yeah? Well, I... <laughs> I mean, now, really, girls. This is the cast of an imprint made at the scene of the murder. Take it upstairs and check every girl's shoe. Well, what'll I say if somebody asks me what I'm going upstairs for? You won't be seen going upstairs. You're going out to the car, then climb up the ladder. Oh, it's uh, right on the back seat. But it's boring. All right, the faster you go, the drier you stay, see? Oh, Mr. Ryan. 
I understand you work at Schroeder's restaurant. Why, yes, I do. He was surprised you didn't show up for work yesterday. Well, I phoned. I was too tired to go. Work pretty hard, don't you? Yes. Tough, contributing to your family's support, too. Well, you seem to know quite a lot about me. Well, that's my business. I'm just wondering how much other people knew. Oh, Miss Peters. Me? I mean, I? Miss Peters, did you go on a date night before last? I'm afraid following that line won't get you very far, Captain Brooks. I happen to know that this girl went to a medical lecture. No, I didn't, Miss Thornton. I didn't go to the lecture. May I ask where you did go? I'm sorry, but I'd rather not tell you. Oh, hadn't you better, Jane? I'd rather not. Well, what the heck will this guy... Uh, I mean, uh, what is Captain Brooks to think? I can't help what he thinks. Shall I tell you what I think? No. no. Oh, I was only... <laughs> I think you're catching cold. I'm cold, too. Come on up and put a sweater on. Well, I'm surprised that two young girls like you. Come stand by the fire. You'll be warmer. Oh, we'll be warmer when we get our sweaters. Well, I... I suppose if you must go upstairs, you must go upstairs. Did you notice the way he acted? I wonder what's the matter with him. Do you suppose he's really crazy? I don't know, but once I read a whodunit where the detective was the murderer. Captain Brooks doesn't look it, though. That Cummings one is the criminal type. Oh, is that so? <laughs> how you got up here. Climbed. A peeping Tom. A second story man. Just a minute, girls. Well, I'm sorry about this. Cummings was acting under my orders. Your orders? Yes, I wanted to compare your shoes with this cast, and I prefer to do it, if possible, without your knowledge. I hope you're not exceeding your authority, Captain Brooks. After all, these girls are in my charge. You haven't been in that room yet, have you? The thing is, I've left lying around. Oh, oh, no. No. Oh, why can't we just bring our shoes? You better wait a minute. Hey, Force, they may be hiding evidence. Well, what do you suggest I do? Surround them? Girls, Miss Thornton, I must insist that you come back out here. Everyone stay where you are. What's going on here? You know, I'm paralyzed. from switches. I don't suppose one of you did it. Well, no, no, of course not. not. No, that's what I thought. Now, if you'll all stay together, we'll measure the shoes. Who's in here? Butch and Alice and I. Please get your shoes. But Captain Brooks, do we all have... Yes, to... I want to see all of them. I think it's awful Miss Thornton has to be subjected to this. It is a shame. Yet I'm certain Captain Brooks knows his business. He's so clever. Yeah, and probably a good guy to boot. Remind me to do it sometime. There's no reason why I shouldn't be treated just like all the rest. I don't understand, Captain Brooks. A lot of us wear the same size shoe. How are you going to be able to tell anything by the measurements? Well, this particular shoe has a metal tab in the heel. It won't be difficult to identify. Hey, whose are these? Mine. Yeah? Your feet ain't this big. I know it, but I ran out of shoe coupons. Oh, your brother's, eh? Oh, no, my mother's. Well, you can put yours away. Oh, I can, can I? Well, let me tell you that... Hey, then I'm not the murderer. Well, who said the footprint was the murderer to begin with? Oh, I didn't think of that. Correction, muscle bound. You just don't think. Well, get her. Anyway, who said that the footprint wasn't the murderer's? We wouldn't be bothering about it if it weren't. Yeah. And since I'm no longer a suspect, I can help the inspector. Let's try hers first. This pampered sprig of fortune would do anything. Oh, Riley, dear. You won't mind if the captain continues in his own way, will you? 
Hey, what's burning? What? It does smell like cowhide. Mm. Could it be the furnace? It's on, you know. Will you show me where it is? Yes, this way. means. Well, you said that footprint didn't have to be the murderer's. But someone having to burn this evidence just told us it was. I'll have to take you all to headquarters. You mean we're under arrest? Technically, yes. We won't try to get through tonight. We'd be washed off the road. But please be ready first thing in the morning. I know what you're all thinking. That one of us is the murderer. When the captain finds out we're innocent, we'll be awfully ashamed that we suspected each other. Come on, girls. I must ask you to go to your rooms now. Just thought, I'm sure he suspects me. Did you see the way he looked at me? I don't know what to do. Maybe I can think of something, Mary. Come to my room later when you can. Did anybody see you? Not a soul. Oh, I feel so cornered, so trapped. As though they're closing in on me. Captain Brooks thinks it's me. I'm positive he does. Suppose they try me for murder. It will never come to that, dear. Oh, why not? I had every reason to kill Paula. Every reason. I've been realizing that, Mary. That's why I asked you to come in. We can establish your innocence about that telephone call. How? By writing Mr. Canfield that it was you who called. Then if they should find out, your letter would prove that your telephoning was no guilty secret. Why, that's a wonderful idea. Of course. Why didn't I think of that myself? It's more than wonderful because you're so sure of my innocence. Oh, nonsense, dear. There are certain things he knows. You're just all on edge. Come along now and get the letter off your mind. Then I'll give you a sleeping tablet to ensure you a good night's rest. Dear... I can't tell you how sorry I am. I'd leave that till last if I were you, Mary. After all, you have to say it again in closing, so why be repetitious? That's right. Just make it simple. Dear Mr. Canfield, I telephoned Paula night before last about a private matter I had to discuss with her. Dear Mr. Canfield, I phoned Paula night before last about a private matter I had to discuss with her. And now you can express your sympathy if you like. There is no use in my trying to tell you how sorry I am about what happened later. Now I'm doing the only thing I can under the circumstances. Doing. Don't you think I ought to clarify that? After all, I'm only telling him I'm the one who called. And that is all you can do under the circumstances, isn't it? That's right. The circumstances. 
dances. That's all. Now sign it. But don't you think if I Just remember, I... Mary, it's always best to keep a letter of this sort simple. Sign it. You're the teacher. I'll see that Mr. Canfield gets it. Now take this, Mary, and go to bed. And you'll fall asleep very soon. I heard someone in my closet and caught this little snoop. Because I'm trying to solve a murder. Does that make me a snoop? No, you were born one. Now, give me that. I won't. It made me a coup. Oh, don't be a goon. Then why did you hide it? I was watching you. You looked all around to be sure nobody saw you. Then quick wrapped it in a towel and stuffed it in your bag in the closet. Why? Well, because I... Because it's my personal property and it's none of your nasty, sneaky, rubbernecky business. Ooh, peroxide. And you're supposed to be a natural blonde. <laughs> Another night like this and I'll be naturally gray. Well, how do you like that? Well, I tell you, Chief, a night with these babes and there's never a dull moment. Please don't try to be a detective, Miss Burke, and stay in your own room as I asked you. I'm... I'm sorry. Good night. Good night. Well, how did you get in here? When he went on the balcony to see you. I'm sorry, but I knew Miss Thornton wanted to see me. Good night. And thanks. Good night. Wait for me downstairs. Miss mm -hmm. Ryan, I'd like to talk to you for a moment. Isn't there something you'd like to tell me? Oh, I don't have to, Captain Brooks. You'll find out. Well, that's true. Just thought we might save time. May I ask what made you think Miss Thornton wanted to talk to you? I didn't word that correctly. I wanted to see her. Uh-huh. Then she didn't ask you to come in. I don't recall exactly. Good night. Miss Orion, I wish you'd trust me. One can hardly trust anyone who suspects one. Can one, Captain Brooks? Well, that's unfortunate. No one can be sure you're innocent unless they know who's guilty. I'm going down to the village to make a phone call. I may be going a couple of hours. Sure, Chief. <laughs> being afraid of this little thing, Shadow. I suppose you were. <laughs> Who, me? You're all on edge, that's all. You're imagining things. Now, if you'll take my tip, you... I suppose we're imagining that, too. Who... Who can it be? It can't be one of us. We're all here. Oh, it's nothing. Probably the wind. If it is, it's wearing a size 12 shoe. Well, aren't you going to do something about it?
Well, I'll be it as if I'm not. I told you to keep your eyes open. No, you don't think for a minute I'd fall asleep on the job. Oh. I can think better with my eyes closed. And you haven't been asleep since I've been away. Me? I should say not. I... But, uh, where did this come from? Probably gremlins. Good morning, Mon Capitan. Did your early worm get the bird yet? We're all practically ready. Splendid. We'll have breakfast in town. Yeah, on the county. Good morning. Well, how are you this morning? Not very well, Captain. This sort of strain is bound to tell. No, of course, but it won't last long. You mean you have some idea to the guilty party? One always has an idea, but that's hardly sufficient to close a case. It is frightening to realize how many cases the police are unable to close. Well, fortunately, that's a mistaken idea. Sometimes we take longer than the public expects, but so far the perfect crime exists in theory only. Really? Then you're always certain of being able to ferret out people's secrets? Oh, goodness, no. The murderer tells us. Confesses? Not usually. In covering up his clues, he drops others. Since a killer must be psychologically unsound, it follows that he must make mistakes. And if he doesn't? Hmm. He will. Let me take those down for you. No, thanks. Oh, Butch, uh, I mean Miss Henry, sir. What did you say your phone number was? I didn't. Oh, well, you better give it to me now, uh, for our records, you know. Molly, Maisie, Betty, Kitty, brother, your records are complete right now. Cummings always serves beyond the line of duty, Miss Hendricks. He loves his work. That's using your head, old girl. I'll go crawl back in the woodwork, will you? Is Miss O'Ryan ready? Hey, where is Mary? I haven't seen her all morning. She's in her room, isn't she? Sure. Oh. Hello. Hi, Mary. Hi. Good morning. You see this oversized toothpick? I'm going to spear one of you bean-headed bags with it. What's eating her? She says her target pistol's gone. So what? So I paid dough for it. Well, don't snap a garter. It'll turn up wherever you mislaid it. But I didn't mislaid. I had it right in on top of my stuff there. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Well, aren't you going to do something about it? What do you expect, a posse? Boy, what a weekend. I never thought it would end like this. It hasn't ended yet, little one. You're telling us. Gosh, I'm sore about that gun. It cost me ten weeks' allowance. It's going to sound odd at headquarters. You're losing it. Hey, are you worried or suspicious? Because if you're insinuating... Oh, quit it, you two, will you? You'll need all your energy in the local Sing Sing. You bet. They're going to ask us plenty. And am I going to have plenty to say? I will, too. Oh, girls, girls, please. I know it's been more than trying. We're all tired and short-tempered. But we still have an ordeal ahead of us. 
please, let, let's not quarrel among ourselves. I was just kidding. Miss Thornton's right. We must remember that we're sorority sisters. It's going to be fun driving in Oh, there. it's going to ruin my car. Come on for it. Wow, look at it. Come down. We'll drown. You were, Mary. I wish we both were. But it's too late to wish now. But why, Miss Thornton? Why did you do it? Paula, I didn't mean to kill her, Mary. But we quarreled, and she struck me. But why? Why? Her father has wanted me to marry him for years. Paula stood in my way from the beginning. It seems I wasn't her idea of a stepmother. She said she'd stop me. She has for a long time. But you couldn't marry him now. Couldn't I? Why not? I've had nothing in my life, Mary, nothing. When the chance came to marry, everything I'd ever wanted, Paula kept me from... I'd given up all hope of ever being his wife. But now that I finally have the chance, nothing's going to stand in my way. Nothing. They'll catch you. No, they won't. I'm sorry it had to be you, Mary. But I've gone too far now to let anything interfere. What do you mean? Why, you're going to commit suicide, Mary. Why, you're mad. They'd never believe I killed myself. Wouldn't they? I have your confession here that you killed Paula. You telephoned, you said, and were sorry about what happened later. And now you're doing the only thing you can under the circumstances. No! You don't think I'd leave any bullets in it, do you? I'm sorry to give you such a bad time, but I had to have a confession. You see what I mean, Miss Thornton? The murderer always tells us 
Your mistake was in hitting Miss Blake over the head to regain your own compact. Unable to admit it was yours, made it seem reasonable to suppose it connected you with the murder. Then when Mr. Canfield explained this morning he'd had yours made identical with his daughter's, your motive was obvious. Burning your shoes didn't help, or your attempt to kill Miss Orion last night. That's what I meant about people who trust you. Sometimes it's because they know who's guilty. Why do you suppose the captain wanted us to wait? Your guess is as good as mine, but I bet he's got the favor all right. What do you make of that? It couldn't be Mary. Of course not. But she did look kind of green. Do you suppose they did find out she did it? Well, if she's in trouble, at least Miss Thornton's with her to help. She's such a kind, thoughtful soul. Thank you. 